everyone, this is Rachel Sandberg again, and we're now turning to how to navigate privacy law in text data mining research, knowing what we do about what falls under privacy law. There are some inherent protections built into the nature of what a plaintiff must show to sustain a claim that insulate you as a researcher or advisor for some, from some risk. Typically, in order to succeed on a claim for intrusion on seclusion or public disclosure of private facts, the two most likely torts to arise in humanities text data mining research, under state statutes or common law, plaintiffs must usually show that a reasonable person would have been offended or injured, not just that they themselves are hypersensitive. A determination of whether a defendant's actions were reasonable is made by balancing the interests of, a, of the plaintiff in protecting privacy from serious invasions with a defendant's interest in pursuing its course of conduct. And further, to sustain a claim, a plaintiff must show they actually suffered harm, such as mental distress or embarrassment. These required showings provide important risk mitigations for researchers, as they are an impediment to lawsuits either being filed or moving forward. Perhaps more importantly, though, there are critical exceptions to the Prosser privacy torts that are very favor favorable to text data mining researchers. First, the right of privacy is not violated by comment or disclosures as to matters of legitimate public interest. And, when it comes to public disclosure of private facts in particular, Tort liability may be inconsistent with the free speech and free press provisions of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, as applied to state law through the 14th Amendment. In these cases, courts often have to balance a person's right to keep information private with your First Amendment right to disseminate information to the public. In achieving this balance, courts sometimes look to whether the facts you're seeking to disclose are of legitimate public concern and or would be highly offensive to a reasonable person. Second, as we saw earlier, a person's death ends their right of privacy, though not necessarily their commercial right of publicity. That depends on state statute. However, you're likely not doing your research for commercial gain anyway. So typically speaking, if you're writing about or researching people who have passed away, they have no vested privacy interest. Third, there are no privacy concerns if the people are not identifiable. And finally, if someone has released the information themselves, such as on social media sites, or given you permission, they cannot sustain a privacy tort claim. I want to take a moment to highlight here for you a potential practical approach to integrating consideration of these privacy torts and exceptions into your text data mining research. It may come as no surprise to you that the same legal literacies researchers and professionals need to understand when navigating text data mining research are critical for libraries to understand in determining what collections or corpora to make available for text data mining research to begin with. At the UC Berkeley Library, we have launched what we call a digital lifecycle program through which we digitize certain of our collections and make them available for free online for text data mining or other research. We have to answer the same copyright, contracts, privacy, and ethics questions in making the content available that you have to answer in using and publishing with it. And when it comes to the four privacy torts, we rely on similar exceptions that you as researchers would do. You can see here that if the subject matter of the collection is no longer living, or the subject matter is newsworthy or of public interest from a state tort privacy perspective, digitization can proceed through the remaining workflows. Our workflows are freely available online. You can look for Responsible Access Workflows, UC Berkeley Library. And we hope they can be a practical way to help you work through privacy and other questions as your research proceeds. So maybe you're feeling pretty good right now, am I right? There's always a catch. So far, we've covered only US law. What about international collaboration or if and how international privacy standards bleed into US research? We'll talk about that in the next set of videos.